I'm looking on the television, there's no Tories there, man. I know. What, what a tragedy, Jeremy. I mean, I think the thing about this King's speech is I think is really interesting is that I, I was saying all throughout the general election is the Labour Party is not going to win this election, the Conservative Parties are going to lose the yep. Conservative Party is going to lose it. And we've had, you know, Keir Starmer uh, elected on 35% of the vote, but that's 35% of people who voted, less than 15% of people in the UK actually voted for him, elected with un, uh, unchecked power to do all the things that they want to do. And I I, I just suspect, like, you know, I was listening to that brilliant interview you did with Harry Cole, that people are going to look up and go, oh, hold on, uh, we didn't know all this was going to happen, what's going on? And I think the honeymoon period... Uh, and do you know why I'm well frustrated? And, and, and do you know why I'm frustrated like you, right? A lot of people will say, well, I mean, the Tories were so appalling. And yes, I'll tell you who I blame. I blame Rishi Sunak and the Tory leadership for not having had the ability to tell the British people during that six-week election campaign of the very reality of what we are now going to see. Rachel Reeves today urged to consider an inheritance tax raid, raid on pensions. This isn't just about the elite and the wealthy. This is people who have worked all their lives, Jake, to save money, to have a retirement, will be screwed under this government. That is a fact. That is going to happen. I didn't hear that said once by Tories. Or I, I might have done, but not enough, mate. That's half the issue in yeah, my Jeremy, mind. Yeah, Jeremy, but the thing is, we tried and, um, you know, people weren't listening. They decided they wanted change, quite rightly so. And that's the great... I, I thank God we live in a democracy because it means we can get rid of Labour if they get everything wrong. But we, we did try. That's... The pensions, I also understand, but you've got to also think that there's. Uh, she's also been urged to abolish the inheritance tax exemption on uh, small family businesses and the inheritance tax exemption on small family farms. Now, to many of your viewers and listeners, they'll just think, well, what does that really mean? Well, if you think about any small business, whether it's a farm or whether it's a, a small engineering firm or even an HR recruitment firm, whatever it is, if you have to, if someone dies who's in that business, if you have to effectively sell half of that business to pay the tax bill on their death, in one death of a family member, maybe two, you've got no business left. And these funny inheritance tax exemptions, like on farmland, if a farmer has to sell half of his fields every time someone dies, he won't have a farm in one generation. And let's not forget the jobs that those businesses create and the right. income and the wealth that then comes from that. Can I just give you, read this out, because I'd love an overview from you, Jake. He, he read out draft laws, the King, including plans on nationalising the railways, speeding up the delivery of high-quality infrastructure and housing, the government has set out aims to modernise the asylum and immigration system, as well as removing the VAT exemption on private school fees. Everybody knows what I think about that. But there was no specific mention of votes for 16-year-olds. And as, and as Harry said, very little mentioned, if anything, about the NHS. I thought that was their big thing. Yeah, well, quite a lot. I mean, thank God common sense has prevailed. I don't think we should be giving 16 and 17-year-olds the vote. I don't think many 16 and 17-year-olds think they should have the vote if you take the time to go and talk to them. Look, VAT on school fees, it's a nasty piece of envious legislation. Uh, you know, they say they're going to recruit 6,500 teachers. Well, there are 11 million state school pupils in the UK. That equates to one minute per week additional teaching. Now, anyone who thinks that the performance of I've got three kids at state school, if they've got an extra three minutes collectively between them, if I think that's going to change their grades in any meaningful way, it's nonsense. It's just a, a way I like, of I like what you people said. who are ambitious. I like what you said about an envious policy. I have a real issue with it, and I'll tell you why I do. I haven't said this to you before. I've said it before on this show, and I make no apologies, because our viewers and listeners are livid about this. The assumption from the Labour Party that every single person that sends their kids to private schools is, is so minted they don't even have to get out of bed. My parents spent 65% of their income, their choice to send my brother and I to private school. And you can all laugh, but this is a fact. They went without things. They definitely went without things because that was their choice. To say to people like that, we want another 20%, I think is a complete disgrace and I think is actually a vote loser because I think people should have the choice to do that if that's well, how they decide to spend their hard-earned you know money, I mean? Jake. Well, well, exactly. That's the point, isn't it? After you've paid your income tax, which we all have to pay, yep. um, it is your money. And then what has struck me as extraordinary on the election campaign, the Labour Party said, well, we don't mind if people spend their money on school. What bloody business is it of yours? What I spend my money on? You're already taking 
a record amount, thanks to the Conservative government, you were already taking a record amount of cash away from people. So why the hell is it Keir Starmer's business? What I choose to, you know, if I chose to spend it on sort of, you know, wine, women and song and all the rest I just wasted, that's up to me. That's right. Um, that's right that's you know, right. but if you choose to spend it on your kids' education, that's up to you. And the other thing I think they missed out on as well, Jeremy, um, as it happens, my, my nephew has just left the private school and um, it was the whole family contributed. So I contributed something, my sister contributed, my father, the aunties, the uncles, the grandparents. So this idea that, you know, there are people, of course, who can just write that check and not notice it. But sometimes it's a whole family mm. effort. And so you're not just slapping the parents in the face, you're slapping every other family member. And the other point is, which you, in that and the other point is, which I will go on and on about, and today it was in the King's speech, it's going to happen, uh, removing the VAT exemption for private school fees might, might seem to be moral, I think it's envious. There's something they've missed out on saying when they say we're going to create 6,000 new teachers. There will be hundreds of thousands of school children who will now have to leave the private uh, uh, the education sector and go back to the state system, which will make it even harder for the people in the state system to get the quality education that apparently yeah. everybody's banging on about. So how does that work? Um, well, Jeremy, you're so right. There were some figures that were released over the weekend, I think, from Surrey Council showing that, uh, you know, there's been a 38% increase in the number of parents looking to move their children yeah. from private schools. So Emily Thornbury let the cat out of the bag during the election campaign and said, well, it'll just lead to bigger class sizes. So the extra teachers won't make it. Cost her a job, though, no, look, it? This, this is an important issue, but it only affects 4% of people. What I want to talk about, if I may, yep. is this little line in the King's speech about the New Deal for workers' rights. And you and I have spoken about this before. I've been in touch with people I know who run businesses, uh, the Federation of Small Business I've spoken to, the Chamber of Commerce I've spoken to today. This has put a chill down the spine of every small family-run business in the UK. Keir Starmer says he wants to go for growth. I am telling you here and now, and I'll come back on in six months' time, you can tell me whether I was right, you cannot have the fastest-growing economy in the G7 that we have at the moment and the tightest rules around employing people. They, they just don't work. And we're not talking about it much, but this is going to be a massive issue about this King's speech because people up and down this country will start not to be hired, they'll lose jobs they've already got, unravelling those minor reforms the Conservative government made. So we're going to be back to the point, we will have more restrictive labour laws for employers than France, right, than France. Wow. We will be worse than France. We're unwinding all the trade union legislation. This is going to grind our economy to a halt. Now, I want the Labour government to succeed. I'm a patriot. I want Britain to succeed. But you cannot create growth while at the same time as crippling every small business in your economy with over-the-top, um, the, you know, the worst, the, in terms of the employer's point of view, the worst employment law regime in Europe. It's been written by their trade union masters. And they say, we're not talking about it today. We're talking about the the energy stuff, the yeah. housing stuff. This is the issue that we will be coming back to time and time again because British business is at a massive disadvantage if this goes through. And I think it's something that the public's really going to focus on because it'll have a real impact on their lives. I think that's right. I think that's massively important. I think the VAT...